Welcome back to the Mad County Build Series. This is Marshall Remodel, and for those of you who don't know, I'm Paul, and today we're gonna be installing apron front farm sinks. So I have a lot of those to do in the house. Of course, my wife picked one of the most difficult sinks to install because you have to cut the front of the sink base out. So I have one done, and I'm gonna show you how, you, how I do it and get good results. I don't like to use caulk just because over time it looks bad. So what I do is I'll use the piece that I cut out of the front and I'll use that to trim the edge of this sink and it turns out really nice. So I have three more vanity bases to do for upstairs. I have three sinks and we're gonna get those all installed today. So there's the sink, it's just a basic rectangle shaped sink. And it will actually sit out from the front of this vanity. So we'll have to cut this out across and up. These sinks are kind of angled. They're not straight, so it adds a little bit of um, complications to it, but it's not too bad. So we have to take these little stops off. I have to kind of uh, refabricate those uh, to get them to work because this will come down low enough that it'll hit the back of these. Um, I guess I'll start at that end one. The first thing I'm going to do, these are frameless cabinets. So there's no face plate. So how they do that is they'll put a board in across the front and then they have this uh, face plate up top, which is even with the door. So you're gonna end up cutting two pieces and I'll cut them at the same time. So what I wanna do is I wanna look across here and make sure this is nice and level and that this piece is centered the way I want it on this cabinet, which this one looks really good. So there's a couple different ways you can do this. You can flip this over upside down, set the sink up there and trace it out. Or you can lay this on its back, set the sink up where it's gonna be centered and mark it out that way. Being that I'm putting trim on here, I wanna be as precise as possible, but it's really difficult to get these absolutely perfect. So you're better off you know, cutting it a little smaller to be safe and then using a belt sander um, or some kind of sanding device to get it uh, as close to perfect as you can. Twenty-six and seven eighths, thirteen and seven sixteenths is the center. So thirteen, seven sixteenths. All right guys, so I got, I have the sink centered here in the front of this base, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take blue tape and I'm gonna look down the side and I'm gonna put the tape on, on each side where it needs to be cut and along the back, making sure that this here in front is flush or you know like maybe a sixteenth below the top of the cabinet all right guys so i've made sure that the top of this is flush with the top of the vanity and then i've made sure double check to make sure this is centered now i'm going to take my tape and i'm from above looking down i'm going to line my tape up with where i need um, to cut so you can see from above there, you got the tape lined up. It's going to probably end up being a little bit too small for this thing to fit, fit in there, but then we'll use our belt sander to uh, fine tune it to fit it in there. Thank you. 
So I got a straight edge clamped on here, the distance between my guide and my blade. And so now we will cut, do a plunge cut and cut this bottom and then I'll freehand the two sides. So I feel like I did pretty good. I might have been off a touch down here, which I can sand, um, sand that the way I need to. And I'm probably gonna have to sand the edges, the sides anyway, to get the sink to fit. So we're gonna do a test fit, kind of mark with pencil what I need to sand the belt sander and get it uh, fit in there perfect. Then we'll stand it up and brace it all in. Okay, so we got this cut out. When I marked it, like I said, I marked it tight so I could fine tune it with the um, belt sander. And to get in here in these corners and kind of round them out like that with a belt sander, if any of you are familiar with the belt sander, you can adjust the belt. And if you creep this belt over to the side, it kind of bends. And then you can get it into that corner and kind of round it out. Um, that's just kind of what I like to do. Um, so we got this cut out. I think it fits pretty good. So we're going to build the uh, support, which is pretty simple for a small base like this. And um, the front of the sink will rest on this. Well, if this is off at all, I'm going to have a trim piece under here that will be trim nailed into here that will hold the front and then the back will have a support going across and down the sides. So this will support the front of the sink. We'll put a support in the back of the sink, which is gonna go from this side over to here, which is just slightly, ever so slightly under 25 and three quarters. I will rip that in half so it'll be inch and a half by inch and three quarters. And then I'll have two uprights that will go down along the side. It will sit in here. These will go down like so, and that will sit on there. So the height of the sink from bottom to top is five and a quarter. So we'll measure down from the top of the vanity down to five and a quarter and put a mark. And then we'll be just like a 32nd to a 16th below that mark is where we want to be. That way you'll be sure that your um, countertop will clear the sink. So I got my mark here. Got my mark here, so now I just need to adjust the height of these supports to lower this, and we'll be good to go. So you can see we have a pretty tight fit here, and you wouldn't really need to do any trim if you didn't want to. So now that we got that set in there, we have to put some stops so the sink can go back. So we'll cut a couple pieces that will go from here 
up to the sink that way when we push this in it will stop it from going back all right so here's the two stops this will slide under here like this get screwed in through the top and then that sink will come back and hit it same way with this one over here one thing to consider is make sure you have enough room depending on what kind of faucet you have that you can get your faucet in my faucet is a three piece so i'll have uh, a cold the actual faucet and then the hot so i have plenty of room the edge of mine are at six inches from the edge all right i countersunk these that hold the stops in because my countertop will sit flush on top of this so you can't have anything sticking up so Got all our bracing and support screwed in. So we'll slide the sink back in there and we will trim out the front. You guys can most certainly glue this if you want. I don't find it necessary. I mean, that is sturdy. All that needs to do is stay in place to hold this in place and hold this up. So. Now if you can see, one good thing to do once you get this in is put levels across to see how you look. If you look at this, it's not terrible. I mean, I took a little bit more out here than I needed to. It's hard to tell because of that shadow. This side looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and build our trim and we're going to use this piece we took out. So I took this with the finished edge on it and I ripped it three quarter inches. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rip it right in half. And by doing that, I'm going to end up with enough finished edges to trim all of it out. So now that I got those cut into equal parts, I can use one for my bottom trim and one for my side. All right, so I brought this in so you could see it a little better. But there's the trim pieces that I put on. And the only part that you can really see is right here in these corners. So I'm just gonna use some of the paint that comes with the cabinets to kind of do these corners and then we be, should be uh, good to go. So I've got two done and two to go. All right guys, so I actually find it easier to freehand those cuts than have a guide. I don't know why, I just do better. But the key to making a nice smooth cut is I have a 70 tooth Diablo blade on here. So 70 teeth, that's, that's a lot for a seven and a quarter inch blade. And so it's more of a finish blade and it's gonna, it just literally cuts like butter through that hardwood and it makes it easy to get a nice smooth steady cut so just keep that in mind when you're making fine cuts like this that are really really important the more teeth you have the better it's going to cut and the better finish cut you're going to get
All right, well, I have the last three for the upstairs done, trimmed out. I hope this video was helpful to somebody that wants to do this. This is the way I find the easiest for me. Um, there's always more than one way to do something, but I get really good results doing it this way and it's gonna work out real nice. So the last thing I have to do is just, Emily and I have to carry these up, put them in the bathrooms, and then that will be a wrap until it's time to put the countertops on. So uh, the next time you'll see these, I'll be installing the cabinets in the upstairs bathroom, and I'll take you along how I do that. Again, these are frameless cabinets, so it's a little bit different than uh, cabinets with face frames. So we appreciate you guys watching. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and we will catch you on the next video.